the work I did with my advisor, <clears throat> Mary M. Najafian, when I was a student at MIT. And it's titled Reducing Sentiment Polarity for Demographic Attributes and Word Embeddings Using Adversarial. So we're going to take a little tone shift and talk about natural language processing. So first, as an overview, there are many different types of dangerous biases encoded in natural language processing models. Uh, it's really hard to define and categorize what these biases are, so I just summarized the major directions I've seen taken in this field. Gender bias, sentiment bias, and finally, toxicity bias. So this work is going to focus mostly on sentiment bias. So sentiment bias, like I said, is really hard to define, so I'm going to start with the simplest scenario. Um, and when I talk about bias in this presentation, I'm talking about the types of biases that could cause unfairness in a downstream natural language processing model. So this is an example where you have two sentences with, uh, that are pretty much the same, but they differ based on the demographic identity term used in each sentence. So a demographic identity term is something that attributes a person to a particular demographic. This could be something like a national origin term, like American, Mexican, Spanish, or it could be even names that tend to belong to similar or certain, demograph certain demographic groups. Um, so for each sentence, we create a word embedding, a representation, pass it to some predictor, and then in one case, we get positive sentiment, in the other case, we get negative sentiment. So this is something we've seen in real-world data that is obviously unfair. So where does this bias come from? Well, to understand this bias, we should first figure out where it comes from, and then we could figure out how to measure it and mitigate it. So in the word representations, you could have problems uh, with bias in word corpus or word vectors training set, learning algorithm, choice of decision thresholds. These are all things that researchers have um, tried to investigate and measure uh, the bias at each stage of this pipeline. So um, in this work, we're going to look at how we can measure and mitigate uh, bias at the word vector level. So the question becomes, how do, we, um, how do word embeddings contribute to that sentiment bias in that first example I showed you? Well, my claim is that word vectors are polarized differently towards positive or negative sentiment. So how do we measure this? This is pretty hard to measure, so we take a similar route that uh, the previous works take, where we just grab a bunch of ground truth uh, negative sentiment words and a bunch of ground truth positive sentiment words. We take the principal component direction of a matrix of each of these words. We take the resultant subtraction between these two vectors, and then for any demographic identity keyword, we take the word vector and project that onto that vector. So that projection is the, um, is the sentiment polarity. Um, so the more positive, the more leaning positive sentiment it is, and the more negative, the more leaning negative sentiment it is. So the bias comes where you have various demographic descriptors within, um, within a certain group. So this could be national origin descriptors where they rely or they uh, end up differently on the sentiment polarity scheme. Uh, so the goal is to take all these gray dots and not have any projection onto sentiment polarity. Well, this is very difficult to do without distorting the like, vector space. So um, the real question becomes, can we depolarize word vectors associated with demographic identities while still retaining their semantic meaning within the uh, embedding space? So a similar, like, people, people have kind of solved this problem in the past with adversarial learning, and it tends to be a good way to solve these types of problems, because uh, you can think if, uh, if an adversary can't kind of extract sentiment from your word embeddings, neither can a downstream natural language processing model. So our algorithm um, works like this. We have a polarized word vector. We use some learn weights to um, depolarize it. And then the adversary tries to take this depolarized word vector and predict the sentiment polarity. Um, so in our training, we train this on every uh, word, and word in the embedding model, and then we try to maximize the L2 error between our adversarial predicted sentiment polarity um, and the ground truth. And then we also try to minimize the L2 distance between our polarized and depolarized word vector. Um, the, this constraint kind of um, keeps our word vectors from moving around too much in the vector space. So um, we're not destroying the semantics of the word embedding. Oh, and then one more thing to mention is that inference time, we're just using the learn weights to re-embed uh, demographic identity word vectors. So now for evaluations. First, we want to think about do the word embeddings become less polarized after applying this technique, and then how do they affect the fairness of downstream natural language processing models? 
Um, so first, this is a three graph showing uh, sentiment polarity for uh, names that tend to belong to African American groups versus European American groups. Um, as you can see, the, the left is the sentiment polarity before applying our technique. So the sentiment polarity is pretty large for all of these names. Then after applying our te technique, we can minimize the sentiment polarity. So you get a lot less negative leanings for all of these word vectors. So this is a significant change, and there's talk in the paper about how this doesn't distort the vector space. So words tend to have the same semantic relation to their surrounding words after applying our technique. But we really want to look at case studies. So how, how does this affect the fairness of downstream models? Uh, in our paper, we do two case studies, one on sentiment valence regression and one on toxicity prediction. Um, I think we're only going to focus on sentiment valence for today. And sentiment valence, valence regression is um, predicting emotional intensity on a score from zero to one. So we talked about evaluating fairness and bias at the word embedding level, but what about at the system level? Um, there's been a lot of cool works recently that have created benchmark data sets and fairness metrics to do so. Um, on, the, on the left, we have a benchmark data set called EEC, and it's basically just a bunch of template sentences, where for each sentence, you evaluate your natural language processing model or sentiment predictor, then sub out uh, for your, the templates of African American names versus European American names or uh, female versus male. And then you evaluate the fairness metric by the difference in the predictions between those two metrics. So this is an example of one of the, those metrics where it's uh, AA, AA up minus E down, which is just saying the average delta for only those pairs where the score for the African um, American noun phrase is, uh, sentence is higher. So this is talking about bias where the model tends to give African American names a higher sentiment score than um, European Americans. And then you can also have the same types of metrics for EE up minus uh, A down and then female versus male. So some setup for the case study. Um, we, uh, we trained NLP models with glove word embeddings and without. Uh, all models were trained on the SemiVal 2018 valence set. Um, we trained both simple and deep models, and then we finally evaluated the fairness using EC and accompanying, uh, accompanying metrics. Um, it's also useful to note that um, all, all the, we also tested the accuracy of each model on the test set from the SemiVal 2018, and we saw no regression. So fairness in word embeddings doesn't necessarily have to be at odds with accuracy. So these are some results showing fairness and downstream sentiment analysis for the metrics I talked about earlier. Uh, each dot um, corresponds to um, the difference in sentiment predictions or the average difference in sentiment predict predictions per sentence between African American groups and European American groups or names belonging to those groups. Red is without our depolarized word embeddings and then green is with our depolarized word embeddings. So you can see that the, the smaller the magnitude, the less bias according to these fairness metrics. Um, uh, there is still some you know, bias left over after we depolarize and this could be due to you know, artifacts of the learning algorithm or bias introduced by the training set. Um, additionally, it's also interesting to note that we tried both LSTM models on the left sides of both uh, graphs, and then we tried support vector regression models on the right side. And it seems that um, LSTMs are a little more sensitive, so maybe they pick up more types of, uh, they, they get higher dimensions of bias and are more sensitive. So that, that's probably why you're seeing more bias uh, in the LSTM models versus support vector regression. Um, and then we have a similar story with comparing metrics of female versus male names. Um, running a little bit out of time, so I'm just going to keep going. So in conclusion, we create uh, a method to depolarize word embeddings with sentiment um, to help make downstream sentiment analysis fair. Um, and there's further discussion in the paper about you know, how, how these methods can lead to fair toxicity production models and then also comparison of bias mitigation <coughs> techniques at various levels of the natural language processing pipeline. So comparisons of how do you compare debiasing word embeddings to training set, et cetera. Thank you. Okay.